Hi there, and welcome to the Air Equipment LLC YouTube channel. My name is Bill Dunn, and I am the Engineering Marketing Manager here at Air Equipment, located in lovely downtown East Hartford. And today our topic is life safety dampers. At Air Equipment, we are the manufacturer's rep here in Connecticut and Western Mass for the Ruskin Company, the leading manufacturer of dampers and architectural louvers. With life safety dampers, a key component is what we call compartmentalization. This is how buildings are built. The architects design the buildings to have uh, fire rated and smoke rated walls and partitions so that whenever and if a fire ever breaks out in the building, it will be uh, contained within a compartment within one small area to minimize the amount of damage done and to give people a chance to uh, evacuate the building without getting uh, injured or even killed. So the buildings are built with this concept of compartmentalization to minimize the damage if, God forbid, a fire ever breaks out. However, whenever we punch a hole in the wall or the ceiling or the floor to run our ductwork, we have now ruin the integrity of that fire rated partition. So what we need to do is to install a device in the partition that will both allow the air to flow through the ductwork during normal operations, but then close down and block off the airflow, reestablish the integrity of that fire rated partition in the event of a fire. And those products that we use are called life safety dampers. The most common life safety damper is the simple fire damper, shown here on the upper left side of this slide. Uh, the typical fire damper is an interlocking blade curtain, and the curtain is uh, folded up into the uh, upper part of the damper frame, and so it allows uh, the air to flow through. And that curtain is held in place up there with a fusible link. Now, if there ever is a fire, that link melts and the curtain drops and closes off the, uh, the opening so no more air can pass through. But more, most importantly, what the damper is rated to do is to prevent the passage of flame from one side of the rated partition to the other. The next product we would use is called a smoke damper. It's shown in the upper right side of the slide here. Now, smoke dampers look a lot like control dampers. They have multiple blades that pivot in place when they close. And a smoke damper, its main function is to block the passage of smoke. Uh, as you may know, smoke usually kills more people in a fire than the actual flames do. Uh, smoke inhalation is, is one of the, the leading causes of death whenever there is a, uh, a tragedy with a building. So the smoke damper's job is to prevent the uh, passage of smoke through the opening. Now, smoke dampers are always motor controlled. You see, there may be a need to close a smoke damper. However, the fire is located in a different part of the building. So there's no heat or flame at the damper position yet, but it needs to close. And so the, the, the actuator motor that operates a smoke damper is that like all life safety actuators, it's power open. It's always continuously driving those blades to the open position and then spring return fail close. If there is smoke detected in the building, then a signal cuts off the power to the actuator and then the spring inside it cranks the blades to the closed position. With the smoke damper, they almost always come with uh, blade seals and jam seals to really make it a tight fit so virtually no smoke can get through there. The third item is called the combination fire smoke damper. This is the photograph in the lower right hand corner of the slide. A combination fire smoke damper does exactly what the name indicates. It does both functions. It stops the passage of flame, what a fire damper does, and it also stops the passage of smoke which a smoke damper does. Essentially, it's just a, a much more heavy duty smoke damper. It's the same kind of principle, uh, multiple blades, motor actuated, and when there is a fire detected or a smoke alarm goes off, the blades crank closed and it prevents the passage of flame and smoke. It's a much more heavy duty construction than a mere smoke damper because it also has to withstand very high temperatures. The fourth and final product type is called a ceiling radiation damper. 
And this is very similar to a smoke damper, and it's usually installed in the neck of a ceiling diffuser or supply register or return grill. And unlike a smoke damper, the ceiling radiation damper also has a layer of uh, heavy duty material, either like sheetrock or refractory fiber that uh, blocks the passage of heat. Because if there is a fire in the room, the heat is going to rise and that damper is going to get very hot. So in addition to having the metal blades to block the passage of flame, there is the uh, insulation material applied to the back of the blades, which blocks uh, the passage of heat. In the illustration here, the photograph in the lower left-hand corner of the slide, you can see that on the, the upper side of both of those butterfly dampers is a layer of sheetrock, and that, that uh, is able to block heat from passing through. The Underwriters Laboratory's test standard that governs all life safety dampers is the UL555 test. You'll see this on all the products, all the cut sheets. Uh, UL555 is for fire dampers. UL555S is the standard that regulates and governs smoke dampers. And then UL555C is for ceiling dampers. With a fire damper, its main function is to block the passage of flame. Uh, dampers are rated, and the most common ratings that we see here in the U.S. market, and based on underwriters' laboratory guidelines, are a damper that's rated for one and a half hours or a damper that's rated for three hours. Now, interesting with these dampers, if the damper is rated for one and a half hours, it is okay to use that damper in any kind of partition that is rated up to but not including a three-hour rating. Quite common, we see two-hour ratings for many of the walls and ceilings and floors. So with a two-hour rated partition, it is perfectly fine to use a one-and-a-half-hour rated damper. This has been uh, approved by the IBC, the International Building Code, and NFPA. Now, if a, if a partition is rated for three hours or more, then you must use a three-hour rated damper. Another important rating for the dampers is the whether or not it is a static or dynamic rated damper. Now, static dampers are ones that are tested and they close fully, but no airflow is going through the duct during testing. Just when the fusible link melts, gravity causes the damper blades to drop down and fill the space and block the airflow, but it's not tested against any, any airflow going through the duct. A dynamically rated damper is one that is tested against airflow. And the minimum rating for this damper is 2,000 feet per minute and four inches water gauge of air pressure. They actually have to be tested against higher numbers than that to pass the test, but that's the rating. And there are other additional ratings, 4,000 feet per minute, 6,000 feet per minute. But these dampers are spring-loaded, because you usually need some kind of spring mechanism to close it completely against that pressure and velocity. Uh, and, but the dynamic rated dampers are just a much safer product to specify and to install into buildings, because even if your design and your control strategy is to have the air handler shut down in the, in the case of a fire, Sometimes maybe something goes wrong and the blower keeps on blowing air through the ductwork. So you want to make sure your dampers will fully close in the event of an emergency. And a dynamically rated fire damper will do that.